is cooking. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the WWE Wrestling Talk. So we have voice for Rock Jones and we are here to review what has been an action packed weekend of wrestling taking place in Brooklyn, New York at the Barclay Center. Yes, for the third time, just like with SummerSlam, NXT TakeOver came and took over Brooklyn at the Barclays Centre. So let's run through what happened. We had five matches on this card. We started with Angelaid Adams with uh, Zelina. Vega taking on Johnny Gargano, former member of DIY. It's not, it's not it was how is the best way to describe it? An interesting back and forth match, yes. which in typical WWE and heel fashion. Ended with just a little bit of uh, outside interference and distraction. Because the winner of the match was? The winner of the match, due to some distraction, was Andre Allen. Because his manager uh, got a shirt, and he's not going to do it at Johnny Gargano. Well, threw it in the ring, causing the distraction. And eventually, the one, two, three. <laughs> Next, we have the NXT Tag Team Championship match featuring defending champions, the Office of Pain, yeah. Akeem and Razor, defending against Sanity. In Alexandra Wolf and Killen Jane. Well, I say Alexandra Wolf and Killen Jane. Last year, this match was originally advertised as. However, these two teams decided to brawl before the match that even got underway. But once. The referee had managed to get things underway and ring the bell. The third member of Sanity, Eric Young, decided to jump up on the apron before a tag to Killian Jane could be made and became the uh, participant in the match, which left Killian Jane and Nikki Cross on the outside. Let's just, this match was chaotic. Even Icky Cross got involved with a little bit of hardcore hand. Yes, in a similar style to what the New Day used to do when they were heels. Sanity made the uh, third man advantage uh, count. Side note also. This match featured the return to NXT of Corey Graves on commentary. Yes, Corey Graves came back as a commentator just for this match. 
former NXT Tag Team Champion in his own right, with the uh, self-professed king of the Cruiserweights, Neville. The emphasis on king. In any event, towards the end of this match, we had Killian Jane drive, not just a member of the Office of Pain, but Nikki Cross threw a table which had been set up somewhere on the outside, allowing Sanity to take advantage of the uh, slightly smaller member of the Office of Pain. To hit the uh, belly to back suplex and dive and neck like a combination to pick up the free count and win the NXT Tag Team Championships, which means that we have new NXT Tag Team Champions and they are, let's just say, not all there. Yes, but however, after the match, we had a tag team debut. Well, we didn't. It wasn't their debut, but we had uh, at the team of uh, Red Dragon, formerly known from Ring of Honor in Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. Yes, known from Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling in the form of uh, Kyrie O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, attack Sanity. And the Office of Pain put in the tag team uh, scene in NXT on notice. <coughs> Next, we moved on to the match between Alistair Black and Hydro Tami. Now, this match was due to uh, the undefeated Alistair Black, obviously, the undefeated Ricky, now heel. This match also had a guest commentator in the form of good old JR, WWE Hall of Famer, Jim Ross. And I, I do not believe anyone in their right mind would believe that we would have Mauro Renano and Jim Ross on commentary at the same time. We had it in this match. The winner of the match, after a bit of a uh, black back and forth type thing, following a uh, lethal kick known as uh, the uh, Black Mass, was Alistair Black. Next, we moved on to the uh, NXT Women's Championship match when the undefeated, unbeaten, almost unstoppable Asuka defended the uh, championship against Ember Moon. Let's just say this match was probably one of the best matches on the card. The women's division on NXT has been pretty good. We had some near falls. Everywhere we had some women, we had drama, action, unity. Ember Moon performed the eclipse on Asuka for the near fall. But in the end, Asuka forced a submission on Moon with the Asuka Lock to retain the NXT Women's Championship. However, In this match, Asuka suffered a uh, collarbone. collarbone injury, which unfortunately has uh, forced her to vacate the NXT Women's Championship. Officially, her reign ends at 510 days. WWE will recognize her reign as lasting 523 days 
because the episode of NXT where she will relinquish the championship will not air until the 6th of September. But now we moved on to the uh, main event of the evening. The, the glorious NXT champion Bobby Roode was looking to be victorious <laughs> in, in this NXT championship match when he took on the chosen one, Drew McIntyre. Oh, this was a match of the night helped match year for NXT. Match of the night, so true. But after some near falls, some high action, and some high on team thrills. One of the match and near falls including some glorious DDTs. Future shocks. He doesn't exactly use a future shock as a finisher anymore. He's after b- being able to hit the uh, the claymore knee, which it's, uh, it reminds me a bit of Daniel Bryan's uh, running knee. Okay. The new NXT champion is Drew McIntyre. However. Oh. After this match, during the championship celebration, we had the dragon of uh, Kyrie O'Reilly and uh, Bobby Fischer reappear to distract Drew McIntyre, only for Adam Cole to make his NXT debut and attack McIntyre. Yes. This is more was done more than likely to set up McIntyre's first feud as NXT champion because on the episode of SmackDown which followed SummerSlam, SmackDown became Glorious as Bobby Roode made his main roster debut. Like it's made in English. If it was glorious and victorious. With a uh, glorious DDT and he debuted as a face despite yes. being a healing NXT. And the crowd chat. So that does it for this year's NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Jump this in a little, in a little bit for our review of the biggest party of the summer. Which of course is SummerSlam. <laughs> There's not a moment to spare It's quite a drop from the top So how you feeling down there? It's a cold, cruel, harsh reality Caught, stuck, here with your enemies
and we are back to present to you the main dish of uh, this weekend, which was Summer Slam. That is the biggest party of the summer. So let's get this underway. We have 13 matches to run through on the Sam Slam card, three of which took place on the place so. The first match took place in practically an empty arena. Why they call this an empty arena match? This was the Miz and the Miz to Edge of Bo Dallas and Curtis Angle. Curtis Angle? Curtis Axel. It's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis Axel. Taking on the team of the Hardy Boys of Jeff and Matt. And Jason Jordan. Now, let's just say, you can hardly call this an empty ring of time. Yes, because this match took place only about half an hour after the doors to the Barclays Centre took place. The Miz made note of that the next night on Raw, going off script. But after some back and forth action in this match, the Miz made a blind tag and hit the Skull Crescent finale on Jason Jordan to pick up the victory. Moving on the second pre show. The second pre show match was the Cruiserweight Championship match with new champion Akia Tazawa defending against former champion Neville, who he defeated the previous Monday on the Raw. And in in almost a deja vu moment of what happened at Battleground after AJ Styles had beaten uh, Kevin Owens for the United States Championship in Madison Square Garden, and also what happened to Zack Ryder after he won the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 32, we saw Neville pick up a victory and become the first superstar to be the two-time NX, uh, WWE Cruiserweight Champion. I almost said NXT. Ha! Again. Let's just hope they don't do a hot potato but at the moment, that, that was a bit of a hot potato moment. However, it appears that uh, Neville will be feuding with Enzo Amore after he made a uh, debut on 205 Live following SmackDown this past Tuesday. Just a short moment. Next, on the last kickoff show match, we saw The New Day. To be more specific, New Day members Big E and Xavier Woods defend the SmackDown Tag Team Championships against Jimmy and Jay, the Usos. And yet again, the New Day will utilize the free bird pool in this match. Uh, not really, but in similar fashion to what happened at Money in the Bank and Battleground. This was a very enjoyable match to watch. Yes. What? The outcome was? The outcome was, after some near falls and back and forth action, we saw the Usos become the first team to hold two SmackDown Tag Team Championship rings. Yes. It's a question of uh, how long they will hold it, because they could easily lose it in October at Hell in a Cell. Some other, some other things also happen at Hell in a Cell, and we'll get to those in a while. Yeah. Now, to the main now, show. Now, on the uh, main show, for the first time that I can recall... Since round about the time 
of WrestleMania 20, 13 years ago, John Cena competed in the opening match of a pay-per-view. He did, and he took on uh, now ex Mr. Money in the Bank, Baron Corbin. Uh, this match was, how do I say, okay. Yes, not the best one over the match, was it, it? It seemed that Baron Corbin was dominating most of it. How'd you do? However, at the end, we saw, uh, well, uh, we actually saw it twice. One from Baron Corbin and one from John Cena hitting each other with a clothesline. Will for your JBL, I think. Yeah, where are you? But following his clothesline, Cena hit uh, Baron Corbin with the attitude adjustment and picked up the uh, one, two, three, which means that for the first time in seven years, John Cena picked up the victory at SummerSlam, and also. Baron Corbin appears to have uh, been buried after casting in Money in the Bank so dreadfully on SmackDown the week before. Yes. And losing to John Cena. <laughs> Sticking with SmackDown. Next, we had the SmackDown Women's Championship defended when us when the uh, SmackDown Grow Champion <laughs> defended against Natalia in what was a good match, slightly disappointing for what the women's matches have become over the past couple of years. But in the end, following the uh, second sharpshooter, and for the first time in seven years herself, Natalia became the SmackDown Women's Champion. On the anniversary of Bret Hart winning the championship. Yes, it was 20 years ago to the, well, not necessarily 20 years ago to the day, but it was 20 years ago at the 1997 edition of SummerSlam that her uncle, Brad the Hitman Hart, defeated The Undertaker to become WWE Champion. And let's just see, and for your last, was there a catch at SummerSlam for Miss Money in the Bank? Not yet. No. I think they're going to drag that out a bit. And possibly, if and when that does happen, it will probably be Naomi who wins it back or something. We'll have to wait and see when Carmella can remember. Carmella can cash that in any time, any place, anywhere, for up to one year. Next, we moved on to some raw action. With Big Cass taking on Big Show with Enzo Amore, Hannibal for win in the uh, shark cage. Hang on. One, two, three, coffee, Christian. <laughs> yeah, so it was uh, a pretty much a copycat of what happened at the Royal Rumble. Wait, just took on Kevin Owens, but Christian Rumble in the shark cage. However, something that did not happen when Chris Jericho was there uh, in the shark cage was a was pretty much a well let's be, let's face it it was a boring match. Big Show's hand was broken even well broken. Not the first time he's wrestled with an injured man because he's wrestled with that before. Yeah. Yes, and. Uh, that did become the focal point of uh, Big Cass's attack. However, during the match, Enzo managed to oil himself free of the cage. Yes. Only uh, by a big boot from Big Cass. Yes, after 
Big Show had been able, after Big Show had hit the knockout punch only for Big Cass to kick out, hit a, hit a left handed choke slam, and Big Cass was uh, getting the upper set, and so decided to strip down, oil himself up, and get out of the cage to be hit by a big boot. Then we had a big boot hit on the Big Show, followed by Big Cass's grip off, in my opinion, of the People's Elbow. Yes, you need to have work to Big Cass about. For uh, Big Cass to pick up the victory. However, things took a very bad turn for Big Cass. The following night on Raw, in an attempt to end this, Enzo Amore and Big Cass have a Brooklyn Street fight. Yes, but Big Cass has <laughs> an injury. Yes, he uh, landed awkwardly on his uh, knee and appears to have injured it. So, we have no scheduled timetable of length. And as men- as mentioned earlier, we featured that moved Enzo to two or five live to possibly feud with Neville. Jumping back to SmackDown, we we said earlier that Baron Corbin appears to have been buried. That is nothing compared to what happened in this match. Oh no! <laughs> this match was Randy Orton versus Rusev. Yep, I took on Rusev. Randy Orton was making his entrance to the lane. And was on the turnbuckle doing his signature pose when he was attacked behind by Rusev. I won, and it didn't feel good that I saw either. They, they blowed for a bit outside of the ring. Yes. Got back in the ring. The referee separated them. Asked bell. Orton if he wanted to compete. Which I said yes. Ran the bell. Rusev tried to charge Orton in the corner. Randy Orton moved. Hit the RKO. One, two, three. Here is your your winner, Randy Orton, in 10 seconds. What is possibly the shortest match in SummerSlam history. And Deja Vu, it also happened again on SmackDown. (laughs) Next, we move back to Monday Night Raw, when Alexa Bliss defended the Raw Women's Championship against Sasha Banks. Now, as previous noted, Sasha Banks does not have the best record in the Barclays Center. Oh no, she doesn't. Losing all of the matches that uh, she has had at NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam over the past couple of years. However, in this match, the curse was broken with the bank statement. The Shasta Banks won the won her fourth Raw Women's Championship. However, the next night on Raw, Alexa Bliss picked up something that Sasha Banks, whilst being a four-time women's champion, has never successfully defended the championship. And she will have her rematch this upcoming Monday on Raw. Uh, let's see how this goes from there. Next, we had the demon, Finn Balor, take on the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt from Monday Night Raw. And this marked the one year anniversary since Bala, or when he was the Deep Raw, in the Universal Championship. Yes. Now, there's not much to say about this match other than 
the winner of the match, the demon Fenbar. Yes, let's just say the demon had Wyatt's number. Next, we moved on to the Raw Tag Team Championships with, with Cesaro and Sheamus defending against two, two thirds of the Shield in Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. And this match almost was like watching the Shield in their prime one. Yeah, the match started out slow. But then picked up as it got done. This match also saw, I, I went, as a result of what happened in this match, we should see Cesaro arrested for damage of public property. Yeah, And Beach Balls have since been banned from all WWE events. As confirmed by Ultra Wrestling. But in the end, we saw the Kinsley and me, is it? I think so. Into Dirty Deeds, the 1, 2, 3, the winners of the maps, and new Raw Tag Team Champions, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. In the process, this has made Dean Ambrose, the first member of the Shield, to become a Grand Slam Champion, meaning he has won the WWE Championship, the, the Intercontinental Championship, the yes. United States Championship, yes. and the Tag Team Championship. Correct. And this is Seth Rollins' is what number reign as Tag Team Champion? Second reign as Tag Team Champion because uh, he once held the Tag Team Champions as the Shield, but with Roman Reigns. Okay, and the next match was? The next match was the phenomenal AJ Styles defending the United States Championship against Kevin Owens. But, Shane McMahon and special guest with Reigns. Yes. Due to some controversial decisions in past matches. We heard from, we had our suspicion that Shane McMahon might do something that me and Reese the Rock kind of predicted. Shane McMahon called this thing down the middle. He said he would only get involved if a superstar gave him a reason I, to. I this, think he lived up to that. This match was. Pretty much everything we'd expect. It's these two superstars do work well together. However, Kevin Owens was not exactly happy because in the conclusion of the match we had Kevin Owens hit the proper power bomb on Styles, get a free count. However, once Shane McMahon had done the free count, he immediately spotted AJ Styles' foot on the bottom rope and immediately waved off the uh, count. Kevin Owens was not happy. They argued back and forth. He pushed Shane McMahon for Shane McMahon to push back. And AJ Styles took advantage. Yes, with a... Uh, Phenomenal forearm and the Styles Cross for the 1 2 3 count. However, that did not end the situation because the following Tuesday on Raw, oh, on SmackDown, sorry, Kevin Owens demanded one more match and he wanted to choose his own referee. He felt that he got screwed and made a reference to the Montreal screw job. We saw this happen. Eventually, the referee turned out to be Mr. Barry Baron Corbin. <laughs> However, after doing some fast counts, I think is the best way to describe it, yeah. Shane McMahon came out and no. I confronted Baron Corbin. AJ, uh, Kevin Owens attempted the low bro, hit the low bro. 
I went with a pin for Shane McMahon to uh, pull out Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin quit as the referee. Yeah, Shane, Shane McMahon became the referee. Kevin Owens basically walked into a phenomenal forearm and a free count, which means, as ordered by Shane McMahon, as long as AJ Styles is the United States Champion, Kevin Owens is done with title opportunities. Next, we moved on to the main event for SmackDown, the WWE Championship match between the Monday Maharaja Jinder Mahal and against Shinsuke Nakamura. And it felt like the whole world was watching Shinsuke, even his home nation of Japan. You can call it a Japan in the dark I was but, I was slightly disappointed with this match. Too much height. No, that's not a reference to height, right? In in uh, in the end, it was yet again the Sin Brothers who made the difference. Yet again. Allowing Jinder Mahal to retain the WWE Championship. However, it is a good thing. Yeah, in some ways, because I there wasn't really much of a story going into this match. Nope. And on SmackDown, we had Nakamura go against the Sin Brothers in a handicap match, destroy them, then hit the King's Chancellor on Jinder Mahal. These two are more likely going, more likely than not going to work again at SmackDown's exclusive pay per view, Hell in a Cell. Which is obviously going to be one of the most. Which is probably going to be when Nakamura wins the championship. Would make more sense. Next.